friends, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new to my channel, I'm Sherry and this is Gardening in the North. While you're watching this video, if you can hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up, all in any action on any of my videos is always great for my channel. So it is that time of year that you are going to be either picking up your chicks that you already ordered or you're going to be heading to your local co-op to grab some chicks. And so with that comes making sure that you have a safe environment for your girls once they're grown and they can go outside because you can't keep them in a brooder forever. So I want to talk to you today about predator proofing your coop and run. I'm going to show you some of the things that we've done with ours. <laughs> she doesn't like that I'm talking. <gasps> you don't like it? Here in Ontario, Canada, where I live, there are five predators that I need to be concerned about. The first are dogs. So that would be household dogs that you have or your neighboring dogs. And so you just want to make sure that if there are any dogs in the area that could be coming on your property or if your dogs are going to be near your chickens that they are trained on protecting them and not eating them i can't tell you how many stories i've read where neighboring dogs have actually come on to other people's properties and demolished their entire flock so the second predator that we have to worry about here are foxes so there have been a handful of occasions where my husband and I have been sitting on the front porch. It's about 30 feet away from the chicken run and, and chicken coop. And we have witnessed a fox run up to our coop. Now, we don't know if it's the same fox, different fox, whatnot. But that happened at like 9.30, 10.30 in the morning. And so the courage of that fox in daylight to run up to a coop i mean as soon as it heard us move around it took off but it still came around and wanted to see how it could get into our run so the third predator that we have here which we've had since we moved here and i'm sure all of you have it raccoons so we have had raccoons on this property since we moved here um if you were to go out and look at lily no lily if you were to go and look at our compost bins, you would see the claw scratch marks that are on there because the raccoons try to get in there. They try to move the lid and get into our compost. And so they are very, very shifty, very smart on how they can get into stuff. And you want to make sure that you're protecting your girls. The fourth predator that we have here are coyotes. Now, I haven't seen any coyotes on my actual property, but I've heard them numerous times. And a friend of mine actually has a trail cam out on her property, and she has caught footage of coyotes coming on her property, and they do not look like they are starving. They are the size of a large, well-fed dog. So you know that they are eating good. The last type of predator that we have to worry about here are hawks. We have hawks flying over our property on a daily basis. And I would say that most of the time that I come outside to do something, I see one. So you wanna make sure that you know which predators you have in your area and you want to try and protect your girls against that. Whether you are building your own coop or you've been gifted a coop, you want to make sure that there aren't any gaps between the walls, the floor, and the ceiling. You want to make sure that there is nowhere in that coop where something could get in and get at your girls. Likewise, you want to make sure that the door leading into your coop is secure. So you want to know, you want your girls to know that when they go into their coop at night to sleep, that they are safe. And so that door really should be secure. It doesn't have to be a fancy door or anything like that. But you want to make sure that if something got into your run and was able to access your coop door, it would not be able to open it. So you just want to make sure that once it's shut, it's shut until either you open it or it opens on its own. One of the things that we did when we built this coop, and when I say we, I really do mean my husband and my son, um, they made sure that there weren't any gaps. 
So what I'm talking about is these two by fours that are here. So once the roof was put on and it, they connected to the walls of the run, we wanted to make sure that there weren't any openings. And so they added in the extra two by fours for protection. The other thing that we did is we used um, half inch hardware cloth instead of using chicken wire. Now, I know that hardware cloth is a lot more expensive than chicken wire, but in my mind, it was a well worth investment. So the reason, two reasons that I chose to use hardware cloth instead of chicken wire is one, the wire of the chicken wire is really easy to bend. And so if you had a predator like a raccoon that wanted to come in and start pulling apart some of that chicken wire, it would have no problem doing that. The second reason is that it comes with larger holes and the holes are big enough for a raccoon to slip its arm through and grab onto your chicken. And again, that is not what we want. So one of the things that we did when we installed our hardware cloth is we used washers and screws. And so you can see the big washers here. And so the reason that we did that is to prevent any predators from actually pushing or pulling that hardware cloth off of the frame of this run. Now, before we did that, we actually installed it and we used staples. So for those of you that have worked with this material before, you know that it is not pliable. You can't bend and move this the way you would another type of material, whether the pieces are small or big. So we wanted to make sure that it was installed correctly and then we put the washers and screws in as that precaution against predators. So the other thing that we did is we put in an 18 inch apron all along the bottom of the run and the coop. And so the way that we did this is we started at the top and we rolled the hardware cloth down along the frame of the run and along the bottom of the coop and then 18 inches out onto the grass area. And the reason that we did that is to prevent predators from digging. And so once we had screwed all this in, I then went around the whole coop and run and used stakes to actually hold down that hardware cloth. Now you can't even see the hardware cloth that is here now because after a season of the grass growing, it's disappeared and it's underneath that grass area. So it's not an eyesore anymore. Um, but our, our thought process on doing the apron is to prevent digging. So if a predator was to come around and start digging close to the run, chances are they're gonna hit that hardware cloth and they're gonna move to the side, or they're gonna go to another section of the run and they're gonna hit hardware cloth over there as well. I'm guessing pretty high on the fact that a predator is not going to back up and dig and then back up and dig until they don't hit hardware cloth. So let's take a look at the nesting box and we can show you what we did on that. So for our nesting box, because of the size of it, we thought that we only needed to have one lock, locking mechanism in the middle of it. And so we're just using this carabiner. It was just something that we had, kind of looks like a fish hook. Um, and we just have it on a really heavy duty locking system here and when that is on there there is no lifting up and getting in and so one of the things I'll show you I don't know if we have any chickens laying eggs right now but oh we have our silkies let's see no she's not sitting usually they're sitting on eggs oh look at all the eggs that she's sitting on <laughs> so as you'll see here my husband actually raised up the framing of this box so when it's down and this is on even if something was to lift up the edging just a little bit that frame is there and nobody and anything is getting into this so let's talk about the windows we almost forgot about the windows because they had um, screens and glass on them and so we weren't really thinking about them until the last minute 
but you want to make sure that you're putting some hardware cloth in front of that screen because those screens can be ripped with a, a raccoon's claw in two seconds and then in two seconds later after that that raccoon is in there eating your chicken so you want to make sure that you've per protected them so we put some framing around it just to pretty it up but that really isn't necessary we use screws and washers on that as well so for our main door into our coop we have a hook at the top that we use as extra precaution and then we have the actual locking mechanism now it's a bit tight because of the winter but along the bottom and along the side there is a frame as well so that the door can't be pushed in and it is no way getting pulled out what is my problem today do that. I got that. <laughs> what? Got that. <laughs> so I hope these tips that I provided you on predator proofing your coop and run come in handy when you're putting together your plan to protect your girls. The last thing you want is for something bad to happen to your girls when you've raised them since they were a day old. Thank you for spending time for, with me and have a great day.